Happy New Year. Hey. Happy New Year. Good to be was back on. Yeah, no. How was your New Year's? It was uneventful. Normally, I have a big countdown at downtown uh, Brampton to be part of, uh, but not this year. Uh, obviously, because of COVID, it was very quiet, but at least there was a World Junior game to watch on TV. True. Unfortunately, the uh, not the outcome we wanted, but, uh, you know, they made it to the finals. Can't win it every year. Yeah, no, I think Canada is the only country when it comes to hockey that uh, a silver medal is no good. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> So uh, I got a bunch of questions for you. I uh, got like literally the most questions I had this morning to ask you. So uh, do you think the lockdown will be lifted by January 23rd? It doesn't look like it's, that's going to be the case um, with escalating case numbers. I, I can't see the province lifting their, uh, their measures. I hope they do adapt. I hope that, uh, you know, we see uh, a more aggressive focus on where the transmission is happening, uh, but I, I can't see the, the province uh, lifting the lockdown uh, measures on the 23rd. Uh, let me ask you this. Do you think there'll be a curfew in uh, Brampton and Peel? Do you think they're going to adopt uh, what Quebec has? No, I, I, I don't see that happening. I think the Premier has spoken against uh, curfews. So uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But, you know, this pandemic has certainly been full of surprises. I personally, uh, you know, that's not something I support. Uh, um, I, I I think um, you know you can have restrictions and focus on where the spread's happening, but I think a, a curfew would be going um, a, a, a bit too far. Um, well, uh, you, I guess there's uh, isolation centers coming to Brampton now. Can you talk about that? Yes, yeah, you know I talked on this uh, this this very show about uh, my frustration that the government of Canada had set up isolation centers in Mississauga and Toronto but Brampton didn't get the funding for one, despite the fact we had a higher positivity rate. I had mentioned that in frustration to the Premier and he came back with funding to set up three isolation centers in, in Brampton. So it was some good news uh, at the end of December. And, and these are important tools. There are many people who when they test positive because they live in crowded living conditions, they don't have uh, a safe place to isolate. And so now going forward, if you test positive, you'll be asked, you know, do you have a place to isolate away from others? If you live in a household of 15 people, you're not going to have a safe place um, to isolate. And, and frankly, there's a lot of people who are in precarious employment, temporary workers, um, and the, the notion they could afford a hotel room on their own for 15 days is unrealistic. And, you know, what an isolation center is, and some people think it's like a jail. No, it's not. That's just an internet myth. Um, it's a hotel, and it's voluntary. If you want to take a hotel room until the virus exits your, your, your system, then you can do so. And public health will be on hand. There'll be a, a health practitioner there to test you and let you know that it's safe to go back to your family. Because one of the reasons we've had such spread in Brampton is you've got essential workers who get COVID-19 and then it spreads to their household. And because we have crowded living conditions, it spreads like wildfire. So this is a, a, um, an important tool. How is this going to work? You're going to ask them to go and, and are you, how about the people that are reluctant to get in, to go to these isolation centers? How are you going to convince them to go? Well, it's not, it's not about convincing. Um, it's, it's voluntary. Um, okay. it, 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 they'll be told the, when they test positive um, that this is an option for them. If they don't have a safe place to isolate, they can get a free hotel room um, it, and with a healthcare worker on hand um, to let them know when it's safe to uh, go back to their loved ones. Uh, Toronto adopted earlier this week the kind of, uh, you know, uh, name and shame type for businesses with workplace outbreaks. I know you've been very vocal in regards to getting this information out and transparent to everybody in Peel. Uh, do you think that Peel should adopt this type of, um, you know, kind of name and shame type? Uh, maybe name and shame is the wrong word, but, you know, you know what I mean. So right now, Peel Public Health's position is if there's a risk to the public, they will publicize the workplace. In Toronto, they're now saying that any workplace with over 20 infections, they will uh, name. Um, in my opinion, it should be any workplace. I don't care if it's five infections or three infections. I think we should side on complete transparency. Uh, I don't think there's no, there's no downside with transparency. Um, in my opinion, every workplace where there's an outbreak, um, it, should be, uh, it should be listed, just like we do with schools and long-term care centers. 
Now, what is Dr. Lowe saying about this? Because I know you've been very vocal about this. So Dr. Lowe says he's looking at um, the what Toronto announced and um, he'll likely adopt uh, um, the provisions that they've uh, put into place. And, and that's a step in the right direction, at least, you know, 20, you know, um, detailing to the public where there's outbreaks beyond 20 people is positive. I just wish it was it was even broader than that. Uh, in Brampton, uh, in regards to the vaccine rollout, will Brampton be doing anything differently than other cities? Uh, maybe like a 24-7 vaccination center for Brampton when it's kind of like phase two and three? So um, this is being run by the province. So the federal government provides the supply and the provincial government runs the vaccinations. Um, I have been told by the, the province, and I've written General Hillier and spoken to the premier about it, um, that... Uh, the hardest hit regions will be getting um, vaccines first. And so mm -hmm. our healthcare workers, our long-term care workers right now are getting some of the first vaccines. And uh, the same will apply when it comes to seniors and essential workers, um, which makes sense. You know, where the virus is most uh, prevalent is where they should be focusing their, their efforts. The challenge right now in Canada is we don't have much supply. You know, the government of Canada needs to do a better job at procuring contracts for vaccines. You know, right now the U.S. has procured uh, 10 times more vaccines per capita. Israel is going to be done their entire country by March. And right now we'll, we'll have only done one or two percent by March. And so I'm disappointed by the lack of urgency that we've seen from the government of Canada to get us supply. Uh, a few days ago, it was 730 cases in Peel. Today, we're seeing record number, numbers in Ontario. Do you see, do you see Peel Public Health uh, putting more restrictions within Peel? Well, they said that everything is on, on the table. Um, what I would say, and I've said this since the beginning of the first um, lockdown, you got to focus on where the transmission is happening. And in a city like Brampton, the majority of our workforce is still working because they're all exempt from this lockdown because they're essential workers. Transportation logistics, food processing, warehouses, fulfillment centers. And so, you know, I, I have talked to Dr. Lowe about this and maybe it's time to have some restrictions uh, on, on those locations. You know, we shut down restaurants and small businesses where there was essentially little to no spread, yet you've got these big box stores and giant industrial warehouses that are open. And so I'd love to see more work, Ministry of Labor workplace inspections on these um, open uh, settings. I think that that would be a positive first step. Um, how many tickets uh, did you guys give out over uh, Christmas and New Year's Eve? So you there were 40 there? tickets given out uh, over the holidays, um, a low number, which speaks to the fact that there was a, um, a decent amount of compliance. And, and we appreciate that, that people understood the severity of the situation. We had no raging New Year parties, uh, which was which was what you know was the fear. And so I want to thank everyone for abiding by the guidelines. Mayor Crombie mentioned that there are speakeasies in Mississauga. Have you heard of any speakeasies in Brampton? No, I haven't. No, okay. Um, and uh, so I have to ask you this. I've asked uh, all the mayors this. Have you or any of your council members went on vacation? I know you haven't because I've seen you watching the hockey games here. So, But have uh, any of your council members went on vacation outside of the country? Uh, I am uh, uh, happy to be here in Canada. I have no plans to go on vacation, nor have I been on vacation. I'm shoveling snow like the rest of us um, okay. and enjoying the great white north. Um, uh, you know, there's something special about... Uh, uh, about winter. Everyone knows I'm a hockey fanatic. And so I, I, I like uh, winter sports, but uh, you know, just getting out there and it, it's a special time of year. Uh, have any of my, of my council members been on vacation? I, I don't think so. Um, no one has informed me that they have. And, you know, I've been seeing people around. So I'd be surprised if anyone, if any council member or senior member of staff have traveled, it's inappropriate. Um, and, you know, I've been on the record saying that, uh, uh, during a pandemic, um, you have to give your head a shake if you think it's appropriate to go on a vacation. Uh, how's the progress in regards to uh, the sick pay from the province? So we continue to lobby pressure to the federal government and the provincial government that we need a solution. Um, right now, it continues to be the provincial government say it says it's the federal responsibility and the federal government says that they believe their current um, proposals that they offer are adequate. And so it's it's disappointing because it's not right now. You know, our most precarious essential workers can't get sick days. Um, and I hear that Brampton Civic Hospital has, uh, they're 
shipping out patients and redirecting them to other hospitals. Is that correct? Yeah, we're, you know, they're well beyond capacity at, at Brant Pacific and Pill Memorial. And I've said this from the beginning, we went into this pandemic um, with our hands tied behind our back. The provincial average for hospital beds per capita in Ontario is 2.19 beds for every 1,000 residents. In Brampton, it's 0.96. So to break that down, we have half the hospital beds, less than half the hospital beds per capita than any other part of the province, which is frightening. And so it's to no surprise now that there's increased pressure on the hospital system that Brampton has to send healthcare patients. Right now we're sending them to the Halton Healthcare Network, uh, to UHN in Toronto, to RVH uh, in Barrie. And they just announced yesterday that uh, for pediatric services, um, they're no longer going to be offering them at uh, Brampton Civic, and they're going to be sending them um, to sick kids. So if, you, if, you're, if your child gets sick and has to go to the hospital, they'll now be dealt with um, at, by sick kids in Toronto. I believe Mississauga will be doing the same thing very shortly as well. I'm going to get to some uh, viewer questions here. Um, are they closing down schools for kids with special needs? So once again, this would be a provincial um, question. This is an announcement that was made by the Premier this week that they were um, extending the closure of elementary schools. Um, you know, I do hope that they provide uh, special help for uh, children with special needs. It would only be appropriate, but ultimately that's not a service that the city provides. It's uh, um, a provincial responsibility so we don't get input or surveillance over it. Okay. Another question we have is, uh, when are we getting rid of the mask covering bylaw? So by the way, I, I see a lot of questions coming up on our live stream about curfews. I know we answered that at the beginning, but maybe I should answer again just for those. Okay, that go ahead. I don't see a curfew coming in. I don't support a curfew coming in. Um, you know, it's one thing to have uh, guidance from public health, but uh, um, I, I think that would be a step too far. Um, in terms of the mask bylaw, it's not ending anytime soon. As long as we're in the pandemic, we're going to have a mask bylaw. Uh, masks save lives. Masks protect all of us. A mask is not a political statement. It's about safety. All right. And uh, what is the city of Brampton's 2021 New Year's resolution? What's one thing you want to accomplish in 21? Well, you know, I have lots of aspirations for the city when it comes to economic development, uh, um, creating the jobs of the future, uh, active transportation and, and you know, fighting gridlock, uh, um, you know, creating a, a healthier, more active community. Um, you know, getting the new hospital built, you know, lobbying and um, putting pressure on the province to build that new hospital. And there's lots of goals that we have, Brampton U, um, cleaning up our local environment. But I think right now what takes center stage is getting through COVID. Um, you know, it, it's still going to be a tough few months. And I know we're going to get back on our feet as soon as we're through this, but we got to get the whole city vaccinated. And I am doing whatever I can um, to, to get the tools from the federal and provincial governments to make sure that the entire city has, has, has vaccines. Now, uh, is, there, is there anything else you'd like to talk about in regards outside of COVID that the city is working on? Well, just at the end of the year, we passed our third budget, uh, only big city in Canada to, tax, to, to pass a third straight tax freeze. So we're, we're, we're quite proud of that. Uh, that's a, an accomplishment. We're making Brampton um, a prime destination for investment. We're becoming a tax competitive. Um, we continue to invest in, in recreation. We continue to, um, you know, be a city that I think is uh, a role model for many. Um, you know, Brampton had, um, had some tough years where we saw taxes go up, where we saw a lack of investment in infrastructure. But I think uh, we got a great council, a great team at City Hall. We're, we're really lobbying uh, to get Brampton back on track. And, you know, right now, you know, if we can get some of the supports that we need, whether it's the the Queen Street uh, rapid bus transit, whether it's the LRT extension, whether it's the, 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 the new hospital, you know, I, I think Brampton's uh, going to have some very bright years ahead of us. And I'll end uh, the interview by asking you what your personal uh, New Year's resolution is. Well, I think I have the same New Year's resolution that I've had the last few years, which is to eat healthier, be more active, you know, stay in shape. Uh, uh, but uh, um, you know, I, I get so busy um, at work and with my job as, as Mayor of Brampton that uh, for me, making sure that I have time uh, set aside for, for family, spending time with uh, Theodore and Genevieve is very important. And, uh, and you know, I, it's no secret we've got uh, another one on the way in, uh, in, in April. And so 
you know, you have to balance that work responsibility with family responsibility. And so for me, that's always a goal uh, every year to make sure that uh, I don't lose sight of that. Good. Are you a winter jogger? I jog indoors. I've become soft in my older uh, <laughs> age. Uh, I used to jog outside, and now I think it's nuts to jog when it's like a snowstorm and minus 10. I've got a treadmill at home, and that is so much more comfortable than jogging uh, in the freezing cold. Okay. All right. Uh, Mayor Brown, we'll catch you next week. Okay. Thank you. Take care. Okay.